let's talk about foam concrete or aircrete. We'll talk a little bit about how you make it, a couple of tricks that you should probably know if you're going to try making it for yourself, and then we'll go ahead and we'll make a batch. Stick around. So aircrete, it's concrete, but instead of gravel, sand, cement, and water, it's cement, water, and air bubbles, soap bubbles, really. It's not going to have a ton of useful applications. It's a pretty niche thing, but it's pretty cool. I've not seen a lot of things like it. Like imagine you're in a situation, you just can't get aggregates to make concrete and you don't need it strong. You just need it to fill some space, maybe provide some insulation value. Well, that would be a great time to try making some aircrete because you can get the cement there. It's heavy also, but you know, it's not as heavy as getting dump trucks full of sand and gravel, which is what you would need to make traditional concrete. So the, these are kind of like the unique applications for it. Cement, water, and a foam that's, you, you might be thinking of bubbles, but picture something like shaving cream, a very, very dense foam, as dense as you can achieve it using some specialty ingredients and a little bit of a specialty process, which we can talk about now. So this product right here is the gold standard if you're making aircrete or foam or anything like that where you want reliable, consistent results with a very dense shaving cream like foam. It doesn't take a lot. It mixes at 160 to 1, which is indicated by the name uh, Drexel FM160. So I've got a jug of water here, 3.8 liters of water. And to that, you would add approximately 25 milliliters of this product. Not a whole lot. If you're trying this for the first time or you can't locate this stuff, the alternative are soaps, shampoos, things like that. You could even use shaving cream, but you know, you want economy of yield here. That's important. So if I couldn't get this stuff, I would be looking towards a concentrated liquid dish soap and something like you see here and the concentration that you would use. Also, you see visualized here, you would use about four times more of it than you would the Drexel product for a given amount of water. So instead of 25 milliliters in this bottle here, I'd have to add 100 milliliters of a concentrated liquid dish soap to achieve kind of a similar result. Probably not as reliable, probably not as consistent. So what does that mean, reliability? You want the bubbles to be of a very specific density, long lasting. That's very important because you could make all of your air creep poured into your forms and screed it all flat, maybe cover it with some plastic and go take a hike and you come back later and you notice it all sunk down. You wanted the forms to be full, but they sunk by an inch, two inches. They sunk all the way into just a soupy puddle of Portland cement and water. So consistency is important. And I have to say like the first times that I've tried with this, I, I'm going to guess 50-50 success rate in terms of I even was able to achieve the thing I was trying to make because it's too brittle or dried too quickly and it cracked or it was of insufficient thickness or I was not able to achieve the density of foam that I was going for because I have a homemade foam generator and you probably will have to have one as well and probably they're all a little bit different you know so there's a lot of moving variables here you can eliminate one of those potentially problematic areas by just going ahead and popping for the bottle of the professional stuff here. This wasn't convenient for me to find. It was pretty expensive to bring in. But if I were making a lot of aircrete, I could make a crap load of aircrete with this. I need to add 25 milliliters of this Drexel product to 3.8 liters of water. And I'll be honest with you, I'm going to do the same thing that you would probably do in my situation. So let's just go ahead and find out how it works. I'm going to double up on that. I'm going to go ahead and add about 50 milliliters and just be all crazy and see what happens. I'm going to add to that a currently unknown amount of cement. The amount of cement that I'm going to add in terms of pounds will be the amount that it takes in order to achieve the consistency that I'm looking for in the, in the mortar product that I'm blending. So it remains to be seen how much that's going to be, but I'm doing my best to take, you know, measurements and stuff like that as we make this. So it'll make it that much easier for you to follow along at home. When you're making aircrete, one of the tips that I've uh, found is that using a vegetable glycerin product mixed in with your foam water that you're making will go a long way towards establishing a bubble that has resiliency and longevity. The amount that you use is so small that it's like, measurable oh you'd put 10 milliliters into like four wheelbarrows full of air crete so i'm just going to go ahead and add a splash of this a very small amount let's say 
and we're going to again double up on the Drexel product here and just see how dense of a foam that we can make through my foam generator. Maybe we should talk about my foam generator for a second because I would go ahead and guess that you're probably going to have a lot of questions about how you make a foam generator. This is the probably around iteration 3.0 on the Steve foam generator design. Um, you know, I'm just following some loose directions I've seen online and then trying to make it with whatever stuff I've just got lying around already. So yours will probably look different. I've seen a bunch of different gravity feed models and things like that, but I just went for simplicity here. And this upright part here, this vertical piece of pipe would be removed and you would fill this with the solution that we're going to be making here with the Drexel product. When I do so, I will be holding it thusly and I'll attach it back on with this union here. I'll be sure to keep this valve closed and then I can go ahead and invert it. Connect my air supply on here and I'm ready to go. But wait, what's going on in here? Just a vortex of mysteries and black magic, I would presume. So inside of this piece of pipe here, I have stainless steel mesh, like the kind of scrubby pads that you would use for cleaning dirty pots and pans. But you need stuff that doesn't have, you know, any other products in it. You just want the, the steel wool product. And you go ahead and you just cram as much of that into your uh, collector tube as you can. At the end here, I've added a nozzle. You don't need a nozzle, but this is purely because I wanted a screen covering the end because under pressure, the steel wool will start to work its way out. And I just solved that. But you could shoot this three doors down pretty easily if you wanted to. So let's talk about pressure for a second. High pressure is not where it's at. I don't want to charge this up to 100 PSI and just let it rip. That's not the idea here. You really just want to bleed out the absolute minimum amount of pressure that you need with your air in order to get the foam results that you're looking for. Like if the water just leaks out the other end, probably need more pressure. But what I've found is that the lowest pressure that I'm able to achieve the actual foam with usually is the best result that I'm looking for. Higher pressure will definitely go through the liquid faster, but it doesn't necessarily produce better results. I end up with a good amount of liquid at the bottom of the bucket that could be recycled and sent through again. So that's how I built this thing, just out of some parts and pieces that I had around. Nothing too fancy. Show you my screen. That's it. And it works. It's not the best design. It doesn't, it's not super economical. The ones that I've seen on YouTube for people who presumably do a lot more aircrete than I do, uh, they have some gravity feed systems uh, designed so it'll just use like a 3 8 inch tubing and draw it out, the liquid out of a bucket. So I, I wouldn't even need to have this liquid inverting. I could just have it sitting in a vessel and then it would just you know, pull out of there. It's actually pretty hard to make one of those. Not that it would be hard, but more involved than I needed to do for the amount of aircrete I'm making than probably you two. Something like this would work. It's pretty easy to do. A couple of valves, a couple of pieces of pipe, optional unions, some steel wool, and a low pressure line supplied by a compressor. That's it. With that and the products that we've talked about earlier, we can now make some aircrete.